way to find cars uh, for this show is just to drive around and see what I see. I saw this 510 and I immediately had to drive it. It's just incredible. had 95 whole horsepower and it now makes almost four times that much power courtesy of a turbocharged SR20 engine with a five-speed gearbox, a Garrett turbocharger and a bunch of other running gear for more modern stuff. sort of like the Japanese E30, very light, rear wheel drive, you can fit all kind of different engines under the hood of there, lots of parts available, and as America spent the 90s and 2000s leaning more towards front wheel drive cars and sedans, the enthusiasts have really adopted these things on the used market, making them uh, quite popular with the Speed Hunters crowd as well as people like Rick, who had them in high school. I'm into Datsuns. I had one in high school, it was my first car, and I just really enjoy the cars. I had a friend that took me for a ride in one that scared the crap out of me, and I wanted one ever since. I bought the first car and started building that. It was a four-door, that's my original car. And I used that as a daily driver. And I wanted something to drive the track, so I started building a two-door. The two-door car I bought was a complete roach. It had no motor, had no transmission. It had a rotary motor in it before, so the tunnel was all cut out. Um, I did all the brake work, all the chassis work, all the welding and taking the rust out, fixing the tunnel. I got the engine bay ready and then I actually gave it to McKinney Motorsports. He put the motor in, did the intercooler exhaust and gave it back a running car, the turbo upgrades and stuff. The plan for the two-door was to build a track car to drive at Willow Springs because we're pretty close to there. And it was just going to be a beat up track car that I didn't have to worry about because I was kind of beating up my original car. We got it done and did a motor transplant and it ended up really fast. I found out I couldn't get enough tire on it. So we started to wide body the car. And then I got a good friend, Tony, who is a painter, and he got involved and made it way prettier than it was ever supposed to get. The best thing about this car is the balance. The car weighs 2,390 pounds. It's balanced 50.5 in the front and 49.5 weight in the back. It's almost perfect balance. It, it doesn't push the front end. It doesn't lose the back end. If it starts to go, it's, it's both at the same time. And if you get out of it, it it's right back. It comes right back. It's a very interesting car because Rick, like some of the other people we've dealt with, has basically no frame of reference. He's never driven a modern exotic sports car or even a modern sports car of any kind. He's only been experienced with 510s. You don't get much out of this engine until you hit about 4,000 RPM and then all hell breaks loose. Because it's 40 years old, nothing has any power. No windows, no door locks, no power brakes, no power steering, no hydraulic clutch. Nothing. Just you, three 
pedals in the road. Ah. Ah. Bit of a workout, this thing. The one thing it doesn't really like is changing camber in the middle of a corner. The car sort of catches the ruts in the road and tends to dart about a bit. But when the camber changes mid-corner, see that? It just gets a little, uh, And modern cars have really found ways to dial that out with computers and fancy suspension geometry. Yes. When you nail a corner properly in this car, you feel like Parnelli Jones or Paul Newman or something. And when you don't, you feel like kind of an ass. Because it's such a small car, you're like, how am I gonna, how, do, how would I not get this right? And then you forget that it actually is possible and you do have to be paying attention. But I'm consistently surprised when I meet someone who's got no frame of reference with current modern sports cars, who built his own car in his garage, tuned it himself, goes to the track, has no idea if it's gonna work or not, and then lo and behold, it works. And even if it scares me at first, once I get used to it, even I can get out here and rip it a little bit.